Hello everyone, welcome back. This is History with Hilbert here, and today I'm going to be continuing our History Visualized series. And in today's episode, we're going to be having a look at some of the earliest Viking raids. Now, the people we now call the Vikings were Scandinavians who came from Scandinavia and sailed across the North Sea to attack places in the British Isles as well as the rest of Europe. But obviously in this one I'm going to be focusing on the British Isles. Now before I begin, a quick notice about the word Viking. Viking in the sense that it's used today is used differently to how it would have been applied or how we're pretty sure it would have been applied in the Dark Ages. To go Viking was to take a ship and a crew to sail across the sea to plunder somewhere and then to go back home with your spoils. That was to go Viking, although now we generally call everyone from Scandinavia in this period a Viking. And this isn't really correct, so it's... And I know that if I don't say this, some of my subscribers will say, oh, you, you used Viking incorrectly, so I'm just going to explain this. And throughout this video, I am going to try and use Viking in the correct sense, as in going Viking rather than that someone from Scandinavia, just anyone, is a Viking. So the first real attack that we see is an attack on the monastery of Lindisfarne in AD 793. And we believe it was Norwegian Vikings who attacked Lindisfarne in this year, although there has been quite a funny theory that's been suggested that they weren't actually Scandinavians at all, but that they were Frisians or something and they were trying to get revenge for uh, Charlemagne, you know, con forcing them to convert and things. But personally, I think this is really flimsy. I think it would be very funny if this was the case, but we're fairly certain that they were, in fact, Norwegians who came and went Viking uh, and attacked the monastery of Lindisfarne. Now this wasn't actually the first encounter with warlike Scandinavians. We see that in 787 AD, the Anglo-Saxon chronicler writes down that in Portland, Dorset, which is in the county of Dorset, by the way, um, these men came from across the sea and that they actually killed a local reeve on the beach who came to see what they were doing. So that's the first sort of encounter uh, with these Scandinavians. But this Lindisfarne in 793 was the real first raid. There were a string of these earliest attacks made by these Scandinavians and we think indeed that they were Norwegians. So after Lindisfarne we also see that there is an attack in Scotland. Now the Norwegians they mainly raided Scotland Ireland and the west of England. So for example in the west of England the Lake District a place called Ullswater and Ullswater actually comes from an old Norse compound because Ulls is conjugated from Ulf and Ulf was actually the old Norse word for wolf but it was also a personal name so that they think that then Ullswater is then being named after this chieftain, this Scandinavian Norwegian chieftain who has settled there. And as well we see that the Norwegians they raid Ireland a lot so there were even some Norwegian kingdoms so for example um, Dublin that's a Norwegian uh, kingdom in Ireland and you have one around Limerick as well and other places and they certainly as well raided Ireland although that's not on this map I'm just mainly focusing on England in this series a little bit about Scotland um, but they also attacked the Scots in the north now the island of Skye was attacked in 795 AD and following the attack on the Isle of Skye you also have another attack on the Isle of Iona and the reason Iona was attacked was because there was a Celtic monastery on Iona and in these monasteries at the time you had these beautiful beautiful things that they made so for example uh, they were very accomplished jewelers and goldsmiths so you had these great big you know golden uh, crosses and things like that and that's why these raiders would come across the sea to attack these monasteries because they were fairly coastal because a lot of the Celtic ones especially and Lindisfarne was Celtic for quite a while. It wasn't when they raided it, but it used to be Celtic. But a lot of these Celtic places, they would try to imitate the hermits from the Bible who would go into the desert. So what they would do is they'd find somewhere on an island cut off from the rest of society so that it was clear that, you know, that was then a divine place, a place of God where the monks could live and work, you know, in one community. But of course there were no guards there, so to a pagan Norwegian it was very easy money and that's why they'd come across the sea to raid these places. Now the main group of these Viking raiders to attack England were Danish and the Danes mostly attacked the eastern and southern coast. Um, however, a quick note before I dive into where the Danes attacked is that these are just a very, very few examples of these raids because many of the raids, especially on smaller settlements and the, you know, the small coastal villages and things, they simply wouldn't have been recorded because there was so much going on in this period and there were very few people who were writing it down that 
the people who were writing it down, they were usually the monks, they were the clergy, because they were, well, the only people who could write. So they would be writing down when a monastery would be attacked, and that's why we know about Lindisfarne and Iona. But if just a small town was attacked, they probably wouldn't write it down, and then we don't know about it because there were so many. So, for example, there were attacks on the Abbey of Jarrow, which I haven't mentioned here because it's not quite as major as these other ones. And there was a, a raid on uh, Hexham, for example, which there's now an Abbey in Hexham. Um, but I haven't included that one either because I'm just including the major ones. So what these are just sort of a flavour of a few of the different Viking raids, but there would have been many, many more. So in Kent, they actually attacked this place called Liming, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And after they attack Liming, they also then move on to attack the island of Sheppey. And a fun fact about the island of Sheppey is that it comes from an old English name for the island, which meant the island of the sheep. And they even attacked London in 851 AD as well. So the Vikings, they were really, you know, they'd come in very quickly, they'd raid, and then they'd be out of there before an army could come. And in 860, they actually managed to raid Winchester, which was the capital of Wessex itself, in a hit-and-run attack. And this, in its own way, would be very much a foreshadowing of things to come. Because soon, raiding wouldn't be enough anymore for the Scandinavian pirates. And the Vikings would be replaced with warriors, and these warriors would make up the great heathen army. So I'll hope you tune in again, again next week when I will be covering the great heathen army and what they did in England and to the people of England. So I hope you have again enjoyed this video of Anglo-Saxon history visualised. Now we're now coming into the era when it's no longer just the Anglo-Saxons and the Celts, quote unquote, in Britain, but it's now the Anglo-Saxons and the Danes and the Norse. So it's coming into quite an interesting period of history and I hope you are still enjoying this little series. And I think I'm going to go up to about 1066 and after I've sort of finished my the, the sort of the Dane law that kind of thing I'm going to go back to some of the other Anglo-Saxon ones and look at sort of um, the actual geography so maybe some rivers some you know the hills what, what was the landscape like uh, and then some about the clergy the church the spread of Christianity uh, and other things like that and where were major places where were major cities what was the trade like between region to region that kind of thing and maybe also something linguistic I'm not sure maybe but uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching, and please tune in next time for the next episode of Anglo-Saxon History Visualized, The Great Heathen Army.